you are very welcome to this yin yoga class. This class is themed around the seasons of life. I was just thinking to myself, if we have yin yoga poses that kind of represent every stage of our lives, from childhood to our teenage years, into our midlife, into our elder years, and then we're all familiar with that pose that actually represents death, which is corpse pose. And we don't have to think of it as dying in its final sense, but rather just getting onto the mat in that corpse position. And when we do that, we're really just giving ourselves time to let something die that we don't want to bring with us anymore. And then when we finish our yoga practice and when we get up off of the mat, we have made some space for something new to be born. So I just thought it would be kind of fun or interesting to take ourselves from our childhood stage all the way to corpse pose with this yin yoga routine. You might actually, you will need some yoga blocks for this routine as we go to those elder years we will need some support and we'll do some supported yin yoga poses. So grab a yoga block or two if you have them. And when you're ready, we're going to begin with child's pose. So you can come into whichever version of child's pose works best for you. Child's pose is a little bit of a mistranslation from Sanskrit. A more appropriate word for child's pose is actually embryo pose. So you can take yourself all the way back into the womb. Start to feel yourself just floating completely supported by the space around you, feeling very safe and protected. And just let something go here, maybe the tension in your jaw, the tightness of your shoulders, Relax your facial muscles. And bring some awareness to your breath. You don't have to control anything. Your body is naturally breathing in and out at the pace that it needs to. We'll stay here in Balasana, child's pose or embryo pose for five minutes in total. So really give yourself time to drop in, to relax. And remember, you don't even know the world yet. So there's really nothing to think about right now. All you have to do is be. And I'll let you know when it's time to come back.
take about three more big nourishing breaths. Taking in all the love from the space around you. When you're ready, you can slowly push yourself away from the ground. And then eventually you can make your way to, down to lie on your back. Our next pose is happy baby pose. So you can bring your knees towards your chest, make them wider than your body. Bring your arms into the middle of your legs and then either come to hold your ankles or your shins or the outside or the inside of your feet. Feet are parallel to the ceiling here if they can be. And since you're in your baby state of mind, you might allow yourself just to rock and sway and play here. Remembering that there's not a care in the world for you. You can just become very curious about your body, looking for those little subtle but very interesting sensations that you're feeling. And eventually when you feel as though you're ready to settle, you might just find some stillness within happy baby pose. And we'll stay here for three minutes. You might feel some opposing energy within this pose. Your feet are trying to touch the sky, but your hands are gently pulling them back down to the earth. becoming really interested in your breath as well here. Noticing how each inhale expands your belly and each exhale gently deflates your body.
Take three more big nourishing breaths. When you're ready to release the pose, you can bring your legs back down onto the ground. Maybe sending them long for a moment. And just taking a little baby snooze here. You can gently wake yourself up now. Maybe taking a full body stretch by extending your arms up past your head. Reaching your toes as far away from your fingers as you can. And then releasing everything. We'll make our way into a crawling position so you can come onto all fours. And just keeping your knees below your hips, your wrists below your shoulders. And we'll start to explore a little bit of movement in the body by doing some cat and cows. As you inhale, point your tailbone up, drop your belly, bring your chest forward and look up. Exhale, point your tailbone down, round your spine, tuck your chin to your chest and drop your head. And keep going at your own pace, following each inhale up into cow pose and each exhale into cat. And this is the first time within this practice that we're really exploring movement in the body. So try to keep that curiosity really notice and wonder about every sensation and movement that your body is making. You can stay with cat and cow, or if you want to get some different movement into your spine, you might just swish a little bit, bringing your hips over to one side and then looking back over your shoulder on the same side.
And now we have to explore the phenomenon of balance. So to do that, you can extend your right leg back behind you, pressing that heel all the way back. And then find something to focus your vision on. When you're ready, extend your left arm out in front of you, pushing those left fingernails as far away as you can get them. And just notice how your body is always finding that center of balance. And if you deviate away from it slightly, it is always there to pull you back to it. And if you fall, that's okay. Just come back up. We'll take three more breaths here. You can drop your hand and knee back down. We'll repeat on the other side, extending the left leg back, reaching the right arm in front. Body is really long here. Take two more breaths. And let's come back down to the mat. You might just sit for a moment, resting your wrists. And now that we have found some movement and balance, we might be feeling quite playful. We might have lots of energy. And I thought a pose that really represents this is Anahatasana or puppy pose. You're making the shape that a dog or a cat does before they're about to pounce and go play with something that they've found. So when you're ready, we'll come into Anahatasana. Knees are back in underneath the hips. Hands extend towards the front of the mat and then the chest and forehead drops down. Point your seat bones up towards the sky. And just imagine a playful young creature or human holding all this potential energy within the pose and just feeling very playful and silly. We'll stay here for three minutes in total.
if it feels okay for you for the last few breaths, you might just shake your imaginary tail the same way a puppy does in this pose. It's moving very subtly and gently to begin. But mostly here, just making that playful energy, remembering that it's always within you and you can always come back to it. And we'll take three more big breaths. When you're ready to come out of puppy, you can very slowly reverse. Eventually, just finding a seat on the mat for a moment. Maybe feeling this new vibrant energy within you. Now it's time for our puppy to grow up into a dog. So let's come into Downward Facing Dog, bringing the hands towards the front of the mat, curling the toes, dragging your hips up and back behind you. And take some time here to paddle your feet, stretch your legs, Sway your hips. From here we'll come into dragon pose by stepping the right foot forward in between the hands dropping the back knee down. Your back knee determines how deep you go into this pose. And if you want some extra support, you can have yoga blocks underneath your hands. So we'll stay here in baby dragon for a few breaths. Really just dropping in and noticing how the body is responding to the pose. We've reached that stage now where maybe we have to start being a little bit stronger. We have to uncover our capacity for endurance. And maybe we have to learn how to commit. So I feel that dragon pose is a nice pose to represent all of those lessons that we have to learn in maybe our teenage years and our youth. So you might be happy to stay here. If you want to go a little bit deeper, you can bring your right foot to the outside of your right hand. You can go deeper again by bringing your forearms onto the mat if that works for you. And we're gonna stay here for four minutes in total. So feel free to fidget and wiggle, but then really try to commit to the stillness of this pose. With the exception, of course, if you are feeling any pain, then please come out of the pose. The one thing that I really love about yin yoga is that it really teaches us the value in staying and committing to something because while it can be really frustrating, really boring to hold a pose, once 
you come out of it, there is a really great sense of achievement and satisfaction. And you are teaching yourself that you can do hard things and you can commit to things when you try to. So with that being said, let's just drop into the pose. Find your breath. Find all of the sensations within your body. And then I'll let you know when it's time to release. If you have your right foot to the outside of your right hand, there's a little option here to take a spinal twist, bringing your right hand up onto your right thigh. First, locating the very tip of your tailbone and then starting to rotate just one vertebrae at a time over to the right until maybe eventually you can look up to the sky. And take three breaths here. And when you're ready, you can come back to center. And we'll very slowly make our way back into downward facing dog. And now we'll repeat on the other side, stepping the left foot forward in between the hands, finding our appropriate baby dragon, and just taking a few breaths here.
And if you wish to go a little bit deeper, you can step your left foot to the outside of the left hand. And we'll stay here for four minutes. You might feel your arms getting stronger here, holding you up. And you also might notice how you have that little bit more of a grasp on your thoughts. As they come in, you're building that strength and power to just say no. I'm not going to engage in that right now. You're learning to just focus on you, on your body, and on your needs. Two more big breaths here. And now option to maybe bring that left hand onto the left knee. Locate your tailbone and then slowly turn one vertebrae at a time to the left. Maybe looking up to the sky. When you're ready, you can come back down and make your way to Downward Dog. Releasing everything you've practiced.
Now you can start to walk your feet towards your hands. Have your feet about hip width distance apart. And here we'll find dangling pose. So you can keep a bend in your knees. Grab opposite elbows. For more support, you can rest your elbows onto your thighs. Or to go that little bit deeper, you can just let your elbows and your head hang. And we're going to stay here for three minutes in total. And I felt that the only standing yin yoga pose is a good one to just represent maybe reaching adulthood. So you can stand here nice and strong and proud, trying not to fidget too much. And just reflecting and feeling all that you feel. You might bring a little bit of awareness into the soles of your feet and just feel them flat against the earth, really firmly connected. Helping you to make your mark on the earth. Take three more big breaths here. And when you're ready to come back down, you can find a seat on your mat. pausing when you're there to just feel everything that you're feeling. Really starting to root yourself to the earth here. Feeling your seat bones pressing down. 
your spine growing taller. When you're ready, you can open your eyes again. Our next pose is shoelace pose. So we have lots of options for this pose and you can always sit on a cushion or a yoga block if you need to. And we'll start by stretching the legs out in front of us. You can bring your right foot to the outside of your left hip. And you can stay here in half shoelace or you can come into the full shoelace by bending your other knee. And again, making sure you're still rooted to the earth, you're not sitting on your feet. Starting to kind of build those foundations, put them down. Lengthen up through your spine. And we'll just stay here to let our hips adjust to this new position. Now from here we'll come into a shoelace twist. So you can bring your right hand back behind you and hook a straight left arm to this top knee. Inhale to lengthen your spine and exhale to very slowly rotate towards the right. I felt we couldn't have a yoga sequence that represents life without drawing in some twists and bends because that is inevitable. So representing those curveballs that life throws at us, but remembering that we can always stay rooted within ourselves. We can always have that foundation of our own being just to help us not get carried too much off course. And we'll stay here for a few more breaths. When you're ready, you can come back to center. Take a moment to let all the vertebrae just roll back into place. And we'll take another little bend here, this time by bringing the right hand to the mat beside us and rainbowing the left arm all the way across, keeping that left seat bone rooted to the earth, maybe looking up. And again, just remembering that even if we are not going the way that we expected to be going, I do believe that we are always where we're meant to be.
when you're ready, you can come back to center. And again, just pause there, letting everything settle back into place. We'll stay here in shoelace for one more minute. When you're ready to come back, you can unravel everything. Slowly stretching the legs out long in front of you. And then just doing whatever you need to do to release the pose. option here to do some windshield wipers. Now we'll repeat shoelace. So when you're ready, you can bring your feet in front of you. This time, bring your left foot to the outside of your right hip, and you can stay there or you can come into full shoelace. And then on this side, we are establishing that foundation once again, rooting into the earth. Just as you feel everything is settling into place, here comes a twist. So let's bring the left hand behind us, right arm hooks to the knee, inhale to lengthen and exhale to rotate slowly to the left. Keeping yourself rooted to the foundation of your hips and of that being down right in the center of your body. You can come back to center, pausing when you're there.
This time your left hand can come to the left. Rainbow your right arm across. Keep that right seat bone firmly pressing into the ground. We'll make our way back to our center now, back to our foundation, and we'll stay here for the next minute. Take about three more breaths here in your quiet sanctuary. And as you're ready, you can release the pose. Again, doing whatever you need to do to release your hips and your legs. I really enjoy that sequence just to remind us that no matter what way we get twisted and pulled throughout life, we always have our own sanctuary within us to come back to, which is a place where we are always grounded and safe and secure and I really appreciate yoga for helping us to foster that sense of foundation even when life is crazy and not so enjoyable you can always enjoy that something within yourself that you create through your yoga practice once you feel satisfied that you have released everything you can come down to lie on your back and just keep your yoga blocks somewhere nearby where you can grab them
starting to slow down and lie down. Now we'll come into supported fish pose. So you can take a yoga block and place it on the mat behind you. You might have a second yoga block or a cushion to rest your head on. And then we want to come back down onto it, roughly aligning the edge of the block to the bottom of the shoulder blades. And then carefully, you can either bring the crown of your head to the mat or you can rest your head on something else. And start to feel gravity gently draping your body over the block, helping you to let go, relax. Feel that opening around your heart space and your throat. We'll stay here for three minutes. When you're ready to release fish pose, you can very slowly lift your head again, propping yourself onto your elbows, removing your block, and then rolling back to the earth. 
noticing the effects of the pose here. You can bring yourself back, just making those little movements again. And now we'll come into supported fish pose. So you can bend your knees, bringing the soles of your feet onto the ground. Lift your hips and place a yoga block in underneath your tailbone, or really whatever position underneath your back feels most comfortable. You might just stay here and see how the body is reacting to this block. And if you decide that you would like to go that little bit deeper, you can place a second block underneath or maybe just change the setting of your one block so it's a little bit taller. We'll stay for five minutes in bridge pose, really allowing everything to slow down and relax. You can find that position for your feet, which feels best for you. And again, just remembering that they are very firmly planted on the earth. We'll start to come out of the pose very slowly, 
maybe just removing one block at a time. Eventually, roll your spine back to the ground. You might release your hips and lower back with some windshield wipers. When you're ready, you can unfurl out into corpse pose. Allowing your body to take up lots of space. All of your limbs feeling long. Notice all of the parts of your body that are connected to the earth. your heels, your calves, your hips, the backs of your shoulders, parts of your arms, the back of your hands, and the back of your head. Feel your body growing heavier and heavier. Relax everything. We have arrived into corpse pose. I spoke a little at the beginning of the class about how Every time we come into corpse pose, we're letting go of something, letting something die. And you don't have to think about what that is. You don't have to decide what it is. It all happens in the subconscious. So here you just have to rest. Just be. Try to let your brain be quiet. Encourage your mind to be quiet. Your body to be relaxed. We'll stay here for three more minutes. I'll let you know when it's time to come back. And when it's time for that rebirth or renewal to start.
You can stay here for longer if you wish. But if you're ready to come back, you can make some small movements. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Comments and feedback are welcome below if there's anything that you think would also represent those seasons of life, whatever poses they might be, please feel free to let me know. I'd love to hear your interpretation as well. And for now, you can roll over onto your right side. Maybe finding a little fetal position for a few breaths. And then you can slowly push yourself back up into a seat on your mat. And every time we come out of corpse pose, out of that death, we have been reborn. We've made space for something new to happen. So I'll see you again soon on the mat. But until then, take good care of yourself and goodbye.